So I'm a little late to the party with the Amazon exclusive, The Boarding School, Las Cumbres. Is this Spanish language series worth the binge? After a failed attempt at an escape from a school for problem children located next to an old monastery, a group of students searches for a friend who is taken by a person in a plague mask. Their adventures lead to discovering that an old cult that inhabited the woods is still committing crimes and that Las Cumbres is more than just a school. So this is kind of a teen dramatic mystery. There are a lot of characters in this eight episode first season, but the show does a pretty good job of separating them all out and giving us enough detail to have a basic understanding of them and then to grow a connection to some. This is a boarding school set up high on a mountain. It's connected to an old monastery and provides a good and creepy setting where mysterious things could happen. The school is run pretty harshly, and that's in an effort to teach the kids discipline. But it's also easy to see why those same kids would want to escape. The story creates a lot of mystery and branches off into two main arcs, with some then offshoots from there. One has to do with the missing student and the folklore of the cult that performed rituals in the forest that surrounds the school. The other involves a student's memory and past, which then sets up complications and mystery with her father and also a teacher. Throughout the story, they infuse some odd imagery, and it's pretty disturbing. I love that we don't know if what is being seen is real or tricks of the mind or maybe even hallucinations. At times the drama is a bit angsty and it's overplayed. I mean, some of the students get a little melodramatic, but can all, it can also be accepted as teenagers with just a wide array of hormones raging through their bodies as they try to learn to deal with those emotions. Now I found several of the characters enjoyable, but they could also be annoying at the same time. On the student side, there are a handful of main players. We have Amaya, Paul, Ines, Adele, and Paz. And they each bring their own level of neuroses and charm. And we're not meant to like all of them all of the time, and I think they accomplish that well. But they're also charismatic at times too, and I found them to be sympathetic characters most of the time. They really did grow on me, and I began to root for them. On the faculty and adult side, we have Elias, Elvira, Mara, Leon, and Dario. And most of them are meant to be the antagonists, especially when you take into account the point of view of the students. The teachers are the authority figures in the lives of these students who obviously have some authority issues. And I like that the story also builds out a lot of them to be suspicious. Most of that is also from the point of view of the students, but there are actions that we witness that make us root for some of the adults and then we loathe others. So like I said, the setting of this old monastery allows for some interesting mystery. And are there going to be hidden passages within? Are there secret messages contained within the walls? And why in the world do they not wear jackets every day on this tall mountain that just seems to be surrounded by snow? I love how the show sets up our student characters to automatically be unreliable narrators, at least to anyone that they would come into contact with within their world. They're known to be problem children, so why would parents, authorities, or even other faculty believe what they say? This tension and conflict are pretty effective at creating an isolating feel for the characters, and they're almost abandoned by everybody, and at times, sometimes by each other. Some of the connections between the students really do need to be delved into more. The show set up some situations that really grab my attention, and I don't know if what we see are real connections, or maybe it's supernatural, or they could just be sharing psychoses where people are experiencing these delusions together. No matter what is causing it or what it turns out to be, it fascinated me and I definitely want to know more. There are also some flashback scenes that are pretty confusing, but not in a bad way. The story is creating a good mystery and continually is raising more questions as the images are unveiled. But just when I think I'm putting together all of the pieces, something comes that shakes my assumptions and I'm no longer certain of what I suspected. The folklore of the cult is intriguing, but definitely needs to be addressed more. Most of what we've seen and been told is speculation. I think there's an opportunity to really dive into some creepiness with the supposed group that performs their rituals in the forest. As much fun as I had with this first season, there are points that just felt like they were dragging on. I wouldn't say entire episodes are unnecessary, just some portions within episodes felt like they weren't really progressing the story along. There are some weird continuity issues and even weirder timekeeping challenges. We see days and nights pass, and then a character will say something like, are you talking about what happened yesterday? Uh, from what we were shown, that was several days ago. So maybe it's just an editing issue, or it could just be the story needed a bit of refining for the order of things. I think my biggest issue with this first season is that several mysteries are raised, and at the end, none have been resolved. I'm okay with cliffhangers and things not being solved, but this felt like we were going to get at least a couple of answers. 
but then the credits roll. And now I'm left wondering, when does the next season come? This ending felt more like it was a mid-season cliffhanger, and that there are still eight more episodes to come. So this series is enjoyable enough, and I'm invested enough that I want to see more of this, and get some answers to the questions the show sets up. Yeah, there are some slower parts that feel more like time-filling segments than story development, but overall, I think it's still worth checking out. Each episode is around that 45-ish minute mark, so they're not massive when it comes to time investment, but I found myself engaged enough that I binged it over two evenings. There is a lot of sex, nudity, profanity, and violence. I give The Boarding School, Las Cumbres, three and a half out of five couches. So what's something that you're watching on Amazon Prime right now? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.